I have some notes, but I don't think I can use it. So this is not the Avatar movie, it's Danube Delta. And uh, in 2009, five days of silence, paddling and birds changed my, my vision about business, about creative industry, about everything. Why? Because I discovered we are using nature only like a background. We are using nature to, to sell things. If you go in Danube Delta right now, so after 10 years, most of the services that there is only selling you nature like a background. You can't find the right approach and this type of experience which bring you very deep in this special relation with nature. And it was very interesting because it was exactly in, uh, in uh, 2009 when you know the crisis start. And uh, I, at that time I was after 15 years of uh, building uh, some companies, architecture, communication, web design, software, a lot of things based on the model of economy presented at that time for us from Romania, it was the add-on. We can do whatever we want if we are competitive. And it was something like this image after, in 2009, when we opened Nokia factory in Romania in 2004, and we closed the Nokia uh, factory in 2010. Yeah, one of the number one leader in, in mobile phones, yeah? So this destroyed all my meat. And after this experience, uh, something happened. And uh, something happened because I said I have to come back every year to get this energy from the nature, which was something I discovered after 10 years in the course, it's called mindfulness experience. After uh, one year, I met this guy. Who knows from the audience who is this guy? Yeah. It's Ivan Patsaikin, it's a Romanian hero. He's a multi-Olympic champion on canoeing. And uh, by coincidence, he was born in Danube Delta, in the middle of Danube Delta in a village. But he's a real character. And uh, I, when I met him, I, I started to tell him about my wonderful experience rowing uh, five days, six days in Danube Delta. And he started to, to tell me a little story about uh, how I was in his village 50 years ago when everybody knows how to deal with nature. All the people were happy. All the people with all the uh, uh, natural problems, they, they were uh, uh, affecting them. But he told me something, you know, something is wrong right now in the village. I really want to do something for these people, but I don't know what. And we start with a very simple idea, and we said, let's offer this new infrastructure of rowing to the people, and let's offer them another experience. And this other experience, because always I look to myself, to what I feel, what I think. I think the personal experience is essential for all my businesses I've done and I will do in the future. Um, and I said, you know, because when you are so uh, inspired and uh, by the nature, you, you want to see the nature working with the community. And the community is the perfect, uh, let's say, uh, solver of all the problem with the nature. And so through him, in fact, 
we start a little uh, story. We build the boat. We found the craftsmen. We we start to to work in the in the area. We we start to discover different places, talk with the people, and try to understand what is going wrong from this relation between human being, the local community of fishermen, and nature. And we discovered some very important thing for me at that time. So first of all, the traditional culture is the perfect and the most pragmatic way of using local resources in a very smart way. And uh, it's not about decoration. It's not about ethno movement. It's much more. You have to go a little bit deep behind in the philosophy of the tradition. Because the tradition, and it's not only in Romania, everywhere in this world, the tradition is based on a pragmatic way of using natural resources around you. So this is a key element. And um, uh, so inspired by this, we start to, to, to invite different people, artists, photographers, architects, entrepreneurs to join us and uh, to, to work with us in very different projects. We create like a, let's, we call it at that time, Patsaikin ecosystem. Right now I saw it's very trendy name, so we have to take it out because we, everybody think it's, we are on trend and we are not on this trend. This is a Patsaikin ecosystem. Architects, photographer, fishermen, his wife, uh, uh, his wife, his son, uh, his daughter. So, and in this game, we also invite some designers and some artists. And um, in this game, in 2013, we create a, a line, which is, we create a brand, which is called Patsaikin. And with uh, their help, we went to Berlin Fashion Week we, and we were in, on the catwalk. But after this experience, I understand that because I'm out of the fashion industry, I understand the fashion industry is not what I'm looking for. So we, we come back to our first love and about this connection between nature and tradition and to understand a little bit how we can use this wisdom of tradition because I think it's a lot of wisdom there. We, we, we lost it. And I'm not talking about decoration and end of movement. I repeat this again. So <clears throat> coming back to the tradition, we, we start from the beginning, which are the local fibers. And of course, we discover hemp. Hemp is very, it's not only in Romania, but for Romania, it's for thousands of years here. So we said, okay, we know about the hemp, but we have to feel the material because what we learn from a craftsman, you know, the craftsman, which without culture, uh, creates some products which are beautiful. But when we are saying they are beautiful, what this means? For us, it means harmony. For us, it means they have a special relation with, with the material. They are inspired by material, but they are inspired by the nature around them. And in a way, the harmony is coming from this dialogue. So we said, OK, we want to create a completely different way of building a brand. So I want the artist, the designer, to start from these two points. One, he has to be connected with nature, native. So this is the reason the designer, he's from a village, not from the Danube Delta, he's from the, the mountain area, but he's really organic, connected with nature. The second thing is, he has to play with material from the first moment. So this is the reason why we went in the field, we cut the hemp, and we tried to be inspired by this. And the second thing we had in mind, why 
these traditional coats. And we have a Romanian word, surtuk, which is a traditional coat for men. Why it's so magic? When you see an old uh, surtuk, you, you, you look at uh, this for 100 years from your grandfather. You like it, you love it. Why? What, where is this energy is coming from? Yeah? So, we come up with this concept of, uh, it's too early, uh, of surtuk. What makes this surtuk so special? I think it's so special because it's very personal. Because surtuk, always the traditional clothes are done, each of the peasant is doing for themselves. It's a very personal relation. So it's not, do, it's not done like this because uh, this is a trend, this is what uh, uh, the people uh, expected from you. It's just because you feel belongs to you. So you have a very personal relation with this. The, the, so we have the surtuk concept. So the designer is out of any fashion trend. He has only a direct connection with the material, with the hemp. And also, we, we, we bring another thing which it's called, I think, hazard. Because whenever you, you are not in a very uh, professional line of production, you have a lot of hazard. Means things which are unexpected, which can affect the final product and the process. But if you are not looking to this like a handicap, you are looking to this like a like a, a spice in the creative process, I think this can be a very interesting advantage. So, having in mind all this, took us around five years to, in a way, to redone the whole uh, chain, ham chain, which disappeared for 30 years in Romania. We use also some industrial parts, we, we also uh, work with some old guys from the industry which disappear. And right now, after seven years, we are ready to show our products. And our concept, it's very clear. I think the future belongs to the local brands, which can be developed locally and can be sold international, but without this local, I mean the circular economy on a global scale, it's a fake. I don't believe in this, doesn't work. The, the, the perfect uh, circular economy, it's on local level. And of course, the identity, what we are talking before, the identity is the brand and the diversity of this industry will be in diversity of our world and in diversity of our, uh, uh, let's say, uh, places. And just, it's a little bit dark, but uh, I will close with one sentence. We are talking about new jobs in the future. Doesn't matter how much the technology will blow, the robotics, whatever you want, will come in our future. I think one very important part of our life and our new economy will be everything which uh, help us in reconnecting us with nature, yeah? So if it's a service, if, a, if it's an infrastructure, if it's a, a, a product, I think this is a future. But on the same time, it's a future which is very local based because the, in terms of sustainability, this doesn't work on a global scale, only local. So I don't have any problem. I'm sure in 30 years from now on, Louis Vuitton, will be uh, 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 exploded by 
uh, 100 brands in Europe regional, yeah, or they will be so smart, so they will make Louis Vuitton cooperative and invite all the others and share the profit with them. Thank you.